What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We're back with our franchise mode as the Minnesota Wild. So here we are at the trade deadline discussing if we need to make some moves. Now there seems to be a bit of a split here. Some people thinking we do need to make some trades. Other people saying not so much. I did get one really good comment and I'm going to read it off from a hazmatic chaos. He says, I think switching McArdle to a two way forward is a good idea. And also, I know how you like Erickson X been producing, but if you would move Couture back up to the first line center, I think he produced just as good as Eck is. Then, and you probably won't like it, but hear me out, uh, move Erickson Eck down to the third line and McArdle up. That way, with Eck, Dano, and Cooney, you could have a filthy scoring third line. Dano has put up numbers in the past, very true. And uh, I think with Eck feeding him, he could really shine. Um, Yeah, that could work out. Uh, plus, with McArdle on the second line, you'd have... The playmaker sniper two way combo that works that does work well together yeah, and uh, might, might break uh, McArdle out of the funk. As far as trades, he wouldn't make any, and um, yeah, hopefully the team is good enough to make it. Depending on Gibson, okay. So let's entertain this thought. Let's entertain this thought right now. So first things first, we would have to move, make McArdle a uh, two way forward, and if we did that, then. So he's saying, okay, I think, all right, all right, let me, so he's saying something like that to try out. It's interesting. Now, Couture, yeah, he does seem to, he did seem to fall more into that playmaking role playing down here with these guys. Now, it's like Niederreiter wasn't getting too many points. It was like Couture is in ton of, or if we put him up here, he has two more guys to pass to. Yeah, maybe that could work. If this guy's a 2 way forward in the end, then we have a playmaker sniper and 2 way forward. And then at that point, yeah, maybe holding on to Niederreiter would be better. The pro the thing is, it's like, Tanev's more of the playmaker, so this guy would have to... Although he might turn back, if he has another guy to pass to who scores, maybe he would turn back into that. Hmm. Yeah, it's very... It's an interesting thought, definitely. Now... Okay. Yeah, I see what you're getting at, for sure. Definitely see what you're getting at. I like the, the reason I had Erickson up there was because he had just like pure assists and so he could pass to like Mitchell and the other guy. But I mean, if Couture can do kind of the same thing, then yeah, maybe it can work like that. Yeah, it's just Erickson was doing so goddamn good though. Ugh. Well, it could work out, but the thing about Niederreiter, man, it's like, I don't know. I don't know about him. Like, I'm still, I'm still not a huge fan of the guy. If I could get, like, it depends. And if there's something out there that I can get for him, that's like an upgrade for him. Like, if we can make this, this look a bit better. Like, the thing, well, at the same time, it's like, to get this to work, we would, you know what? I want someone who takes more shots, I think, for Niederreiter. Although, putting McArdle here, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, I see where you're coming from. But I don't know if, huh, yeah, I don't know if it completely would work, just because Niederreiter has been so weird, I mean, yeah, maybe it helps snap him out, but we're going to lose him to free agency most likely anyway, I don't think we're going to get the guy, well, we don't really have anyone to replace him super, super quick, unless, you know, well, Chubrov's list has fourth line now, I'm not really going to bring him up though, Hmm. Uh... He could kind of get away with playing in the depth, but mm, he's not really incredible. Yeah, he's not really incredible in other regards. So it's like if he, nah, yeah, maybe, I don't know. All right, well, first things first, let's change McArdle to a, to a two-way forward here and hope that helps him out. And yeah, I don't know if I want to, I mean, if I... If I trade, you know what? I'm thinking, like, if I... <laughs> I'm thinking a lot of crazy stuff, actually, about even trading Couture for, like, a more pure playmaker, but I don't think that's... I think that might be just kind of counterproductive because he's seeming to play well with us right now. All right, anyway, McArdle. Let's change this guy to a two-way forward, and hopefully that'll help bust him out a bit. So, all right. Let's chain in a two-way forward. There we go. He's number 90. Dude, everyone's freaking like 90-something <laughs> on our team now. It's funny. All right, so change this guy to a two-way forward. We'll play him over there. 
And, uh, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm so torn about leaving Erickson down there on that line. Yeah, it could really work out, him playing with two 2A forwards, and he's pretty decent defensively. But, man, it's a risk either way. It is a risk either way. But I am willing to kind of take a chance with that, I think. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go back there. I wish, uh, I wish I, I wish I could have made this, these changes kind of sooner so that I would still have a bit before the deadline to be able to make moves. But if we're going to trade Couture and Niederreiter, it has to happen now. I'm, I'm not, I'm leaning towards Niederreiter as a guy to go and not Couture. But yeah, I mean, 36 points by this time in the season is really not good. But with this new line, he could really, really do well. Let's see. He's not really good with anyone besides Couture. And that's not what we're going for right now. I mean, I could move Mitchell back down to be the goal scorer. But I think that we had that combination before. Lombardi, Couture, Niederreiter. And I don't think it did too well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we could try this. But, oh, man. I don't know. It's almost like I should trade N Nino for like a pure play, like a play, a guy who actually does a great playmaker. But like we have that, ah, I don't know. Like I know where you're coming from, but ah, uh, I'm a little scared. It could work for the playoffs, but I don't know. Whew, okay, well let's see. Let's see if we could replace Niederreiter with someone better, and then also like for someone who's maybe like a rental type guy who's also declining. Let's see. And then we can get a bit of extra stuff. If we're able to grab something like that, then I would I would kind of go for that, I think. So, Niederreiter's got a decent chunk of value on him. I mean, he's young enough, and that is a good chunk of value. If we're, Were we to get someone who was, like, declining, but with a really good... But still, who's... Re okay, Suter's over in St. Louis, I guess. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Well, I'm going to actually just search around. I'm not going to worry about blocks. Let's just start at the beginning here. And look around for a forward... Who maybe could fill that role. No one there. And sort by overalls would be ideal. Okay, no one there. Let's see. They got Bergeron, who's 87. I know he's a center. He's a righty, though. Hasn't produced insanely well for them, but... Man, those defenses, that's a killer. And this guy would actually work out pretty damn well. Please only have one year left. He does have one year left. Okay. Bergeron might be a really good option here. Going for someone like Bergeron. Playing, we'll probably put him in the center. Move Tanev over. But that would give us two 2 a 4s on that line. I'm not too sure how it would work out. But that's a pretty decent idea there. Okay. None of those guys. Yeah. No, that won't work. Okay. None of those. Let's see. Johnny Gaudreau's very unhappy there. The whole team's happy. Or unhappy. Arvidsson. Playmaker. Nice. Takes 132 shots is not bad. Three years left. Nope. Can't do that. Alright, who else here? Uh, none of those. No, not Nykvist. No, he's not. I've, I've had that guy before. He cannot do anything. All right, Taves is on the block, but I can't, no, can't really go after him. Okay. These guys aren't going to be wanting to give up much, and they don't have much to give up anyway. Same with uh, Columbus, they're not going to want to give much up. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Sureback, I saw. I'm not too sure. Oh, he's, ten uh, he's not good. Nope. Jurass Radulov, no, too too far declined. It needs to be someone still with high, like Bergeron. It needs to be someone like with like Bergeron. That that is the best option right now. Is that guy has to be low value but high overall. Like it's it, we're look it's it's very very specific what I'm looking for here because I still want to get extra stuff back. We're giving up a relatively young guy, you know. If we if we end up making a trade, so we got to get back a lot that we're able to use. Okay, no. Yeah, as of now, Bergeron is the best option there. But I'm not too sure how the combination will work. He produces very simili similarly to Niederreiter. thing about this is we don't necessarily have a a perfect replacement for Niederreiter coming down the pipe, really. 
Like we like when we look at it, if we're looking at right wingers especially, we don't have it. Like we kind of almost we could look from free agency for something, but again, we had to we have to find like the perfect thing. And with the now that we're switching the lines, I I don't know. Like yeah, I mean yeah, we could always move you know McArdle back to right wing, but all depends on how he produces and how he grows. But then again, that'll leave us short on the left winger side of things. Yeah. You know what? It might not be the best idea to trade the guy right now. I mean, Couture would be the guy who we could afford to trade, but I don't want to trade him because he's doing pretty damn well this year. Not amazing, but definitely well enough. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, the more I look at it, the more I think in a trade isn't... I'm. We might need to sign Niederreiter for another couple of years. And yeah, he hadn't produced too well this year, but I don't want to make a trade right now when we're also going to switch around the lines and something that I don't know to work. Uh, yeah, so I don't think we're going to make a major trade. Yeah, I don't think we are. And Wu's very unhappy here. He's really not happy about his... Well, he's not happy with his ice time or his performance. But he's, he's playing great, so I don't want to give him up. Okay, well, yeah, um, yeah, the more I look at it, the more I kind of want to see if, what our team can do. We can also have this value to chuck in there. You know, maybe, maybe there's someone that we could package together, like an even better winger that who can play second line. Okay, no, not what I was saying. Like, who can play second line or even first line? Shen? No, not really. Yeah, I don't know. The more I look at it, it's kind of like... Eh. You know what I mean? If I can get, like, a... No. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the more I think about it, it's like... We don't have a guy to perfectly replace him. We have to kind of get lucky in free agency. Kessel would almost be good if he was declined a bit more. Sprong is kind of... Ooh, he's actually kind of really good. Wow. Those offensive stats are amazing. How many shots did he take? 149. Doesn't have a great percentage, but he at least takes a decent chunk of shots. 149. How's that stock up to some of our guys? I think we, uh, hold on, where's, what's, what's, all right, let me find our guy, our main guy, Lombardi, because he had, I think, the most shots, how many you've taken, 215, yeah, it's not a whole hell of a lot, but someone like that would make a bit of sense, he'd at least last for a bit, mm, but yeah, the value's not extremely attainable, and again, we're kind of replacing a player with the same type of player, and there's no guarantee that he pans out, but he's got way better offensive stats, and not as good of a shot, but... Hmm. Again, but like at this point, it's like we're trading kind of just a trade. And this guy's produced well, but he's also on the Penguins. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't... I'm not seeing... Yeah. I'm just not seeing it now. Like, I'm not seeing how we can really really improve ourselves yeah okay well i'm leaning towards not making a trade now and i think that's the better option as much as i could bergeron was really the only one i wanted to go after and there really wasn't a big guarantee and but he would be great for the playoffs man that's the one thing i liked about bergeron he'd be great for the playoffs maybe need a rider drops the free agency maybe there's someone else we could pick up in free agency to replace it and that's the only reason that i consider trading him but it's another center yeah we could play him on the wing but he's got 90 something face-offs so why play him on the wing man how's the value look How's that value look? They don't want Niederreiter. But we could easily make it go through. 
and we can p get back a bit of something extra, but they're not going to want to give it picks because they don't have much. Well, we can pick up a bunch of later stuff. Those should want to give that up. Yeah, we can get all that plus that. <sighs> He's better overall. He's actually listed as second line. He's got the, about the same offensive stats. Takes a bit more shots. 163 compared to 107. Takes a lot more shots, actually. And he's... You know what? I think I might actually do it. It sucks to lose Niederreiter, but this guy's not a sniper. And he's not even producing that well this year. So really, we'd be getting kind of the same production. I, I'm, I'm betting he's on the first line, though. Is Bergeron. I don't think they have anyone better than him. They don't. So yeah, this that production is first line production. But man, is it good? Well, not amazing, but they are they are a terrible team. So you know what? I think we're gonna try this. I want a bit of. I just don't think Niederreiter is even a guy that we we'd want to come bring back next year. So actually, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> change my mind once again. But I think we're gonna go for this deal. Gonna get a bunch of later picks in this. I think this is going to pan out. I'm going to play this guy in the center. Probably move Tanev onto the right wing side for his 1T because he seems to take a lot of shots. So, yeah. All right. So, I think we're going to make this trade here. Niederreiter for Bergeron. A 4, 5, 6, and a 7 for this year. Which, um, yeah, gives us a few. We have a lot of picks this year. We're going to have, have a lot for Max year, but whatever. Might as well get them all now. We have a, oh, yeah. We're going to have quite a decent chunk of picks this year. Cool. All right. Yeah, I think we're going to try this. It's uh, it's the best that we got, and I think it really could benefit us. Plus, this guy can do penalty kill and stuff like that. So we kind of been lacking good penalty killers, and I think this guy will be perfect. So you know what? We're going to try to make this through. Niederreiter for Bergeron and a 4, 5, 6, 7. We got it. Not too much to deliberate. I guess we could have got a bit more, but I think it's still really really benefit us benefits us okay okay so here's what we're gonna do we're still gonna keep um yeah we're still gonna do the mccardle thing and we're gonna put in bergeron here let me just fix these lines uh how much is how long is this gonna take i think we might keep erickson for the power unless you know our power play was slipping with him up there maybe bergeron but make him probably take face-offs Let's see. Yeah, Bergeron. Oh, we don't have Mc... Oh, Mercado's on the point. That's fine, yeah. Though he is a righty, but it doesn't really matter. You could try something like that. And yeah, someone mentioned these guys should be on the one-time side, so there we go. My bad. Usually do that. Okay. And then we'll still try Kachura up here, I think. All right, four man. Yeah, let's just put Bergeron in there. All right, yeah, I probably could have made this a bit easier to do, but here we go. Bergeron Couture could work out well. You know what, though? It's only four and four. It's not that big a deal, actually. But possession. And these two hybrids can work together. Couture will take the face-offs. There we go. All right, sorry about that. I'll usually cut this stuff out, but it shouldn't. it's not going to take too, too long, so I'm not going to bother in this case. For the three, though, the three-man, I'll keep him on the third, I think. Yeah, we'll keep, it in the, keep the rest of it like this. Okay, that'll work. Shootout. We had, hold on, who was it? Who was it with really good deking? Does Bergeron have decent? He's actually pretty good, but I think we had someone else here. I'm trying to remember who it was. No, it's not Erickson. I thought it was one of my uh, player power forwards. Yeah, McArdle's got decent. Uh, what about Mitchell, though? He should be already in there, right? Oh, he's not? Oh, my God, that's an oversight by me. I thought I had him in there. Whoopsies. Sorry, Mitchell. We got to get you a guaranteed shot because that deking's off the charts. Let's put him first with that. Yeah. 
That's pretty damn good. All right, there we go. Okay, so those are going to be our lines now. McArdle, Bergeron, Tanev. Yeah, I know, two two-way forwards, but with how many shots McArdle takes as well as Tanev and Bergeron, I think it could work out. Chemistry-wise, I'm not sure, but we're going to give it a shot, and we're going to keep that as a third scoring line and try this out. I don't know how it's going to work, but I do like it better than Niederreiter on there. I really do. It, it looks a lot better than Niederreiter on there, and this guy's going to help out a lot with our PK. Speaking of which... All right, Dubinsky, we got to go with the best of the best. Sorry. Bergeron. Bergeron, Gauthier, and then Dano Mitchell. Because Mitchell's really good. But let's try McArdle since he's now a two-way forward. Maybe slightly better. Okay, and we also have Mitchell on a line higher than he is. All right, so let's try that out. For the... Yeah. And then... We're going to go with Bergeron, of course. And Couture, maybe. 88, 85, 86. What about Tanev? What was he looking like? 85, 85, 91. Good stick checking. How about Lombardi? Can he pen with 93, 82, 92? Pretty damn good, all of them. So I guess we'll try this guy. How many, t oh, you know what? How many takeaways does he have? That's a good question. I want to see how many takeaways this guy has. Damn it. There we go. Is he looking like he's one of those kind of guys? Really high takeaways? More take? Yeah, decent right now. Okay. We'll try that out. Okay, those are going to be our lines here. And I think that's the only trade we're going to make for now. Yeah, I don't think I need to do anything else. Now we also we should have a decent third line scoring line. Because Dano can put up numbers, definitely. I don't see. Okay, well, I think this is what we're going to roll with here. Going to try to get McArdle to break out here. Get out of that little funk he's in. Playing with Bergeron and Tanev. Then we got Lombardi, Couture, Mitchell. Now, another option to do is have Bergeron up here and go 2A4, Playmaker, Sniper. Also a good option. But let's try Couture out there first. And if, yeah, if it seems that we're stumbling here with these lines, we'd always switch things up. But we don't have much of the season left, so... I think that's it. I'm going to take another quick look to see if there's anything else I wanted to move this year. I don't think there is. Besides maybe some junk guys. But we can... I think most of these guys are were from this, this past draft. So we can... Yeah, I think all of them were. So I think we have one more year to be able to trade them. So next year we're going to need a lot more later picks. So we're going to save them, I think. Yeah, because we don't, we don't really need too many uh, picks this year. We, are, we already have tons. If I could get it to sort properly. Yeah, we have a lot for this year. Yeah, we have enough. So next year, we'll probably see if we can get some more. But for right now, I think that'll be good. So there's the trade. Pretty big trade. But we got some playoff experience, some grit, and big penalty kill. Big penalty killer. So I'm hoping that improves us in all the right ways here. So we're going to continue. And hope that our team doesn't suck after that trade. Because... That's always the danger. Your team could be absolute trash after you make a trade. So let's hope that we're not. It's a good win, but we're going up against Tampa now. We beat them. All right, good. Solid. Another win. All right, looking good so far. All right, tough loss right there, but can we answer back? Yes, we answer back with a shutout. Okay. Another win. I think that changed our team for the best. <laughs> tough loss right there, but we come back with another big win. All right, looking good so far. Winnipeg's a good team. We're battling with them for the uh, in the division. Can we get a big win right here? Scouting assignment first. Where were we? All right, so goalie's here, I think. Yeah, goalie's weak. All right, tough loss right there. And another loss. All right, two losses. Careful. Careful now. Got to turn this around. Chris Terry, right winger. What do you like? No. Ugh, three losses in a row. Come on now. Come on now, guys. You start off so good. Don't 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 falter now. Don't be faltering now. Alright. Good win right there. Alright, good, good, good. We're back on the right side. Oh my goodness. Loud a lot of goals, but we scored a shit ton. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness. Whoa. 
Where was that goal scoring coming from? We got a 50-win season. A bunch of shutouts to end the year. And you know what? I don't think that's just a coincidence. I think Bergeron helped out our team defensively a fuck ton. My God. Look at the end there. I know, like, I know we allowed a lot of goals at the same time, but, like, dude. Like, some of these shutouts in here, man. Shutout, shutout, shutout. And, like, dude, look at the goal scoring. Eight goals for, seven goals for, seven goals for, four goals for, four goals for, four goals for. A lot of goal scoring here. All right, anyway. We made it to the playoffs. Let's see how our how the how the team did at the end there. I should have checked the stats before and then had a before and after. That's oh my god. Well, Lombardi got seventy two points. Good call. I'm pretty sure. I'm, holy shit. I'm pretty sure we got a sick amount of production. Great call right there on the line changes. I think. Wow. We ended up in second in division. Wow. Winnipeg at hundred sixteen point season. We got hundred six points. Goals four. We we went back up to three. So that's great. Goals against. We went down to two point four four. That's huge. Power play twenty one point four. It's still good. Uh, penalty kill 81.3 yeah, it's solid all right home record 27 10 and 4 away record 24 17 and 0 and last 10 8 2 and 0 so yeah i'd say we absolutely exploded there what where was lombardi's points at the deadline wasn't he in the 50s or maybe not even in the 50s wasn't he still in the 40s what the actual fuck lombardi just went nuts there at the end and Bergeron got a lot of production. Someone, if someone can remember, I someone will go back and check what he started at. But I know, I don't, I know, it wasn't close to like sixty points. Damn. So Lombardi led our team seventy-two points. Absolutely exploded there at the end. Couture was sixty-three. Mitchell got up to sixty. He's a thirty-goal scorer. Wierenski, ton of. Let's see about McArdle. Um, I don't. Uh, Let's see, what was he at? Like 11 and 9 or something like that? So he got some more assists. He got a decent chunk of production. I think he was at like 11 goals, 9 assists or something like that. So like 20 or so points. So he got it 10 or 11 points there or something like that. Anywhere from 10 or 12 points in that stretch. Not bad. Still kind of iffy on this guy. But you know what? You got, you did all right. I can't remember what his points were at. <laughs> I always forget. Anyway, well, let's stick with forwards for now. Let's look really in depth here. Bergeron, I want to see... Yeah, yeah, good. And Lombardi's kind of turning into that kind of guy, too. That's good. Okay, Couture. 63 points, man. So, yeah, he really he really did turn into more of that playmaker there when we needed him to. Uh, yeah, that was... I think, yeah, that first line just took over, man. I can't remember what all their... If you guys can remember what those point totals are and do some math for me, like, what their pace was, like, at, at that stretch, that would be amazing. Mitchell, man, 30 goal score. Really happy about that. He was definitely, uh, he might have been on pace for that, but wow, 60 points as well. Tanev got himself 50 points, 20 goals, 30 assists. I'm happy with that. Erickson got himself 50. You know what? Yeah. Erickson got himself 50 points in that third line. Dano and Kudin. I mean, he was kind of already on pace for that 50 points easily, but he didn't really, didn't really seem to affect him. I know he still got power play and all, but damn. Wow. Lombardi was a beast on that power play. Anyway, Kunin, some minuses here. Dubinsky minus, Gauthier, Brown. We got some minuses down here in the depth. I'm not 100% happy with that, but we'll see what happens. All right, anyway, let's check out the defense now. Everyone's a plus. Wierenski led in points with 54. Bokefist coming in a close second with a 48. And he's 86. I don't know if that's... I'll have to check the growth. I really like the stick checking, though. Hopefully that helps him out in this regard. Eh. Can't really. I don't know. Defensemen are weird. <laughs> Defensemen are weird. All right, Dumba got decent production, but plus ten is what you're looking for. Plus eleven for Rodine, and our top six were both pluses as well. Solid, just solid. And let's see, did Gibson kind of get? Yeah, he got better. Gibby definitely got better there. Only played 59 games. Cockinen played a lot, but you know what? He had good stats, and he got the points I wanted out of him. So yeah, maybe he played a bit more than I would have preferred, but. At the same time, Gibson was struggling throughout, you know, so, wow. Yeah, I mean, they, that was great. <laughs> and you know what, Mitchell is going to make a case for that Calder, definitely. Look at that, 61-point rookie season. Definitely going to make a case for the Calder. Wow. 
What a what an explosion there. So I was very worried about that trade, but I I honestly think that really helped us out. I think it helped our defense out. I think it helped our penalty kill out a bit, and I think it even helped our scoring out. So yeah, um, we got Bergeron now for the playoffs as well, and he's not going to decline. He's still got top six. But he might decline one, but I don't think he's going to like hardcore decline. And he's and that defense is still going to be incredibly solid. So with this guy on our playoff squad. I like I like our chances here. I definitely do. Wow. Yeah, I need I, I'm gonna need some help. You guys can do some math on like w the pace that guys were on after that because I think Lombardi absolutely exploded. He was at like 22 and 23 or something like that. I if I remember correctly or something similar to that, which is like in his fifth. Yeah, that's it's still crazy. I don't know. I can't remember. So you guys are gonna have to help anyway. So you guys are seeing that. Let's check out the league. Artemi Panarin on Ottawa. Okay. Kucherov just lost, but Artemi... Pa We've had the weirdest le point leaders here. We just keep having the weirdest freaking point leaders. So Panarin led for the forwards. Kucherov coming in a close second. Poor guy. I know a couple people chose him. Wow. Nemesnik oh, man. Nemesnikov is really good. Panarin, though. Jesus. 74 assists and almost a 30-goal score. That is crazy. Patrick Laine still with a crazy good season. Damn. Damn, man. All right, goal leader. Tarasenko, 50 goals. Uh-oh, Ovechkin only down here with 39. He is beginning to decline, but he should stick around another two or three years. and Hopefully, he's able to beat that Gretzky record. That's what I love to see. All right. But Tarasenko, 50 goal, man. Only 33 assists. Yeah, the Blues didn't do too good this year. He was kind of like a one-man army. Looking at him a minus three with those kind of like, yeah, yeah, poor guy. All right, well, line ad tied with um, Stamkos in second. Assist leader most likely. Oh, never, oh my God, 81 assists. Holy crap, 81 assists for Nemesnikov. I thought it was going to be Panarin hands down. 81 assists for Nemesnikov. Craziness. All right, let's check the plus minus leaders. Colin White, plus 45, Panarin. What a line that with him. Like, so what? It's Colin White, Panarin. Yeah, he has Colin White to pass you. That helps. Who's the Who's the other guy on their line? Hoffman? I, I'm guessing Hoffman, yeah. Craziness. All right. Good stuff right there. Power play goal leader would be Kucherov with 20. Power play point leader most likely. Yeah, Kucherov with 39. Kessel with 37. Nemestikov, 34. Um, Besser had a lot. Where was, yeah, Lombardi was down here with 26. So, pretty good for him. All right, who's the most clutch? Look at Lombardi, though. Second place with nine game winners. And compare, look, look at the guys who, who beat him, too. These guys both have 40-plus goals. Like, Lombardi, when he scores, it fucking matters, man. Damn, I love this guy. What a beast. Takes a lot of shots, too, man. 286 shots. Whew. Good, good stuff. All right, yeah, let's see who took the most shots. Ovechkin still. Tarasenko, Tavares. But look, yeah, Lombardi's up there. And let's see if we got anyone else here. Lombardi, I want to find some of our other guys like Tanev and stuff. If they, I don't even think they're that high though. They're Skinner. Oh, interesting. Come on now. Uh, there's Mitchell. Oh my God, he broke 200. Oh, there's McCart. You know what McCartle did? End up taking a whole lot of shots. You know what? I think if if he was in that spot for most of the rest of the year, maybe he'd have a better chance to break out. I do like that he breaks 200 shots. What about Tanev? I thought he was gonna break. Did I skip him or maybe he just kind of fell off there? But I don't see him. There he is. Yeah, there he is. Okay, one well, didn't quite break two. Oops. Okay, good. He's still listed as for uh, second line. Yeah, I didn't quite break that, but that's all right. All right, let's look for high, the best shot percentage. Uh, line A. Yeah, I know points there with that, but Line A took almost 100 more shots, so that's obviously better. So good job for Line A. Okay, let's see about the takeaway leader. McDavid with 154, only 36 giveaways. Jack Eichel, though, the slightly better ratio. And Patrick Kane up there. And then our guys should be around here. I think he's in the 60s, though. So, yeah, not that high. Whatever, though. All right, I think that's that'll be it for forwards. Let's check out defensemen. And Ekman Larson leading in points. So I'm not too sure if anyone's winning this year. I can't remember, but... I don't think I, I don't know if I saw anyone guessing Panarin or Ekman Larson for the league. So, oof. crazy Ekman Larson's doing great. 
Seth Jones in second with 75. Where is Carlson? Down there with 66. Funnily, because the Senators seem to do so good, but I guess Panarin and their, that whole first line, they were just producing enough on their own. Wow. Crazy. Ekman Larson, though, should be taking home that Norris, but Jones actually makes a strong case for himself. He's a plus 40. Not as much power play production. Wow, he got four points shorthanded. That's impressive. Didn't take as many shots and had a relatively similar shooting percentage. Hit a lot more. Blocked about the same amount of shots. They had the same amount of takeaways but less giveaways. That's a close race. But I think you should give it to Ackman Lars. I don't think plus minus should be taken too much into account because, I mean, he's on a shitty team. So, yeah. All right. Well, goaltenders. We know our guy isn't going to end up here. He only had 59 games played. Oops. Went, went too far. Come on. There we go. But, uh, Hellebuck, I think he's going to be supplanted. Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky looks like a shoe-in, man. 46 win season. 67 games played. Yeah, he's a shoe-in. Hellebuck's close, but you got to give it to Bobrovsky. He's better in every single category. More games played. Equal amount of wins. Although, yeah, you could say that. Maybe the... Nah, no, but still, I think you got to give it to Hellebuck. Or, sorry, Bobrovsky. Yeah, definitely. All right, now... Was Mc, uh, Mitchell definitely, yep, he was good enough to take home that Calder. 30 goals in his rookie year, 61 points. Terrence Johnston, oh, this is the other, yeah, this is the other guy who went, yeah, this is the other guy who went, uh, they both pretty much grew the exact same too, that's crazy. Yeah, this is that other guy who went in the, uh, that first round, he went later than, uh, we got Mitchell. Mitchell went 10th, Johnston went 14th, these were the best players in that first round, and there they are, but you know what, what the hell? 51 points for a bottom... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you must have insane awareness. Yeah, there it is. All right, well, there we go. I think, yeah, didn't Lombardi win it last year? Now we got Mitchell to win it this year. All right. I don't think we have another top rookie coming in next year, though. And I don't think there's going to be... A, there's only one goalie. And no, that's definitely not good enough to beat out our guy. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. Well, there we have it. Time to check out the fun stuff. Hits, Hiskinen led with 193, Shazi close behind with 192, and fights, Borwicki and Dachin, both <laughs> at the top, 24 and 22, and Lucic, ooh, he's declining, or maybe not, maybe he's demoralized, 82, he's, yeah, he must be demoralized, I can't check, oh no, third line scoring, what the hell, maybe he's, what the hell, did they just, or maybe they changed him in the recent update, to be shit, Makes sense. He is shit. Okay, well, whatever. Not too sure. Anyway, I just want to check AHL, though, because there's a... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Damn, the AHL is just crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts, man. That is nuts. All right. <sighs> Excuse me, guys. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. All right, so before we leave it on the uh, playoff tree here, let's check the growth. Let's check those progress reports. Who got the most? Who's the ghost with the most? Okay, so Lombardi got uh, five, which is good, but, man, you saw that guy in the AHL. I think he's going to win it. Abraham Mitchell got three. Let's take a look at his stats now. They'll pass, and, oh, man, he's so good. He's so good. And I love that he takes a lot of shots, too. That wrist shot got, oh, man, that wrist shot's crazy good. If his slap shot gets any more better, he's just going to be insane. He's pretty damn good defensively. Not so much shot blocking wise, but oh, such a fast skater. And he's got a physical game to him. I think he laid a decent amount of hits too, if I recall correctly. Dude, 139 hits. Like, consider the top guy was what, 213? Like, that's not bad. That's averaging like one and a half hits per game. Pretty good. Pretty damn good, Lombardi. Considering he's only 5'9 as well. Mitchell getting up there. I love his awareness. His shot got slightly better. He's more definitely kind of a one-time guy. Great skater, not physical guy. That's why we changed him to a sniper. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, JT Brown. Bokefist. Um, is that all? No, he's got some natural in there. Oh, my God. His awareness went up even more. Yeah, he's definitely got some natural. A lot of it is he's also got morale growth, but he did get natural growth, so that's good. It's got a combination of all three. 
Good job, Bokefist. All right, McArdle got a bit of growth. So I wish his awareness would get better, but what can you do? His shotgun, yeah, he got some decent growth, but not a whole lot. He's not a, the strongest skater, but he's a good guy. All right, Wu's got statistical minuses. Yeah, he's not going to be long-term, I don't think. What's his contract like? Can I, I don't think I can check from here or whatever. I think he's got, I think this might be his last year. We'd have to sign him, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, Todd, I've got a tiny bit of growth. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Got it in the places that count. You know, awareness, he needed to get that up. Got some morale growth. Bit to a stick checking. Bit to balance. Yeah, not a whole lot, but he should still, he's got a, does this guy lay the body a lot too? Because he's got, not as, as much as the other guy, but still, averaging over a hit a game. Ah, that's fine. Fine with me. Okay, and I think that's all for the main growth here. Yep. Okay, in the system. Shishkinov got five ticks of overall. Morrison got 13 total. This is the guy. He led it. Morrison led the way. Now, was this guy... What was this guy? How do I check where he went? I can't check from here. Yeah, I want to... I don't know if I drafted this guy or what. I can't remember. I, well, obviously I did. He's 18. Yeah, so I drafted this guy. So, Nice. A peacock got six total overall growth. I want to see what this guy's looking like. Awareness is passing is good. Shots good and even. Defense is good and pretty even. Oh my goodness, he's going to have a tremendous physical game. Yep. Oh uh, yeah, I'm looking for this guy to break into the NHL at some point. Don't know where he's going to play yet, but we'll see how he develops. Peacock got a decent amount of growth for being down there in the juniors. Let's see how he's panning out. Okay. Even with the awareness and that, even shot, I like it. Good defense. Decent skater. Not really much of a physical game yet, but hopefully we can develop that. Uh, Kempinen got nine total growth. Has a bottom six, too. What? I'm, this guy might actually crack my NHL roster as a bottom six. Ooh, his defense is really trash. Why, why does it always happen? You get one guy to grow all crazy, and he's not even that good. Okay. Where do they have the rest? Where's all the major guys here? Okay, after that, not too much. Yeah. Okay, goalies, did he get any more? No, he stayed at nine the whole time. All right, well, hopefully he gets a big old jump in the offseason. But, yeah, I think we should definitely look for another elite goaltender here. we got to hedge our bets. There's no guarantee that he cracks the roster. With the way he's kind of growing slowly, you don't know. I think he should still crack the roster. It'll just be a bit of a late bloomer, like 22-ish. 22-23, ish I'd say. All right, well, there we have it. So, the win Lombardi did lead in points. Wierenski led us in points. The league, though, Panarin and Ekman Larson. And the grower was Morrison. And I don't think anyone chose that guy. Those red elites, man. That's why it's sometimes safe to, you know, to, to guess some of those guys with the low overalls because they have a lot of room to grow. A lot of room to grow. Anyway, there we have it. Playoffs. Are coming up next. We made some trades there. Let me know what you think. I'm pretty sure it speaks for itself, though. We uh, kind of went on a bit of a tear there at the end. We're taking on the Avalanche in the first round. And here's the matchups. Wild against the Avalanche. The Central Division Showdown. Winnipeg against Vancouver. Oilers versus... Oh, shit. They weren't as bad as I thought they were. Oilers versus Arizona. And then LA versus Dallas. Okay. Eastern Conference. Pittsburgh. Oh, my goodness. Pittsburgh versus Philly in the first round. That is going to get ugly. Columbus versus Ottawa. Buffalo versus Toronto. Eichel versus uh, Matthews. I like that. And then the Lightning versus the Caps. So, there you have it. And, um... We'll start the playoffs in the next one, and I think I will uh, save the announcing thing for when I did it this year because it kind of seemed to work out. We announce it, and then you get to guess all the players again. All right, guys, so hope you enjoyed this. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you guys in the playoffs.